Well, thank you so much, Astrid, and also uh, Gikondi for uh, opening this year's forum for your messages and for giving us a good idea about what's at stake and how this forum aims to achieve our vision 2025. And just to give you an idea where you stand right now, I have the result of our polling at the beginning. We got all the answers all separately, but we have a good overview now. And I can tell you that only about a handful of all the participants who took part in this polling question don't expect COP26 to deliver because they fear it's too late. Everyone else, all the others, all of you, believe there is still hope and we can do something about it. And with that in mind, I now have the pleasure to introduce the two co-chairs of the high-level consultative group. For one, that's Dr. Maria Flaxbart. She's the Parliamentary State Secretary at the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development here in Germany. And His Excellency, Alfred Alfred Jr., the former Minister of Finance, Banking and Postal Services of the Marshall Island. And he sent us a video message. Let's listen in. Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alfred Alfred Jr. I am the Minister of Finance from the Republic of the Marshall Islands, part of the Troika of the V20 Group and co-chair of the Insular Resilience Global Partnership. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the Insular Resilience Annual Forum this year. We are coming together to shift from political ambition to implementation, recognizing that we, from the, global, from the climate vulnerable countries, experience a 98% financial protection cap. The IPCC 6 assessment report spells devastating news for the most climate vulnerable countries like the Marshall Islands and other small island developing states and low-lying areas. Equally important is for all nations as signatories to the Paris Agreement to end the use of fossil fuel. If we preach the 1.5 degree Celsius limit of the Paris Agreement and reach two degree warming, we risk a three meter rise in sea level. The Marshall Islands is less than two meters above sea level. The report confirms that we are on the edge of extinction. As we know, COVID pandemic has only made global inequalities worse. It is clear that we must urgently shift focus on adaptation and climate and disaster risk financing and insurance toward comprehensive risk management implementation to protect our people, our enterprises, and our infrastructures. Yet many countries lack access to disaster funds and adaptation funds, and are not eligible to access contingent credit lines or purchase too little or no insurance. The system we have today was not built to contend with non-financial and economic shocks like COVID and climate change. This is why we urgently need a fit for purpose prudent wood system as called for by the V20 in order to ensure that we have the right support system and peel the right macroeconomic fundamentals to deal with non-financial and economic shocks like climate change. Following the call from the V20 ministers of finance during the Climate Vulnerable Finance Summit, and together through the Insular Resilience Global Partnership, we can build a new system that prioritizes new investment in resilience, including preparedness to reduce life and economic losses, as well as overall cost of response and recovery. So together, I hope we can accomplish and contribute to three key items that are central to closing the financial protection cap to reach our vision 2025. One, global public-private partnership on risk analytics and resilience. 
There is currently a lack of risk and resilience data made available to enable cost-benefit analysis or recognition of value and utilization of adaptation and comprehensive climate and disaster risk financing. The V20 call for a global public-private partnership on risk analytics and resilience can make accessible and usable comprehensive information and models to inform trade-offs and cost-effectiveness of adaptation, climate, and disaster risk financing to close the financial protection cap, adaptation measures, and global mitigation efforts. Two, mobilization through the V20-led sustainable insurance facility, which is now hosted in UNEP FI PSI and supported by MC2. Micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises are important drivers of socioeconomic growth. I encourage partners here today to work together to deliver the objectives of the SIF to promote uptake of insurance to address climate risk, causing businesses interruption, and enable the use of low-carbon technologies through opportunities such as savings guarantee to improve project economics and commercial viability. Three, systemic provision of smart premium subsidies and capitalization support. Smart premium subsidies and capitalization support can play a critical role in improving the affordability of climate smart insurance by reducing the cost of insurance premium or cost of capital. The improved affordability can pave the way to build new insurance markets and increase insurance penetration rate, providing funding and liquidity for climate fuel disaster insurance products and reduce vulnerability. The systemic provision of smart and premium subsidies and capitalization support for micro meso and macro level instrument through an inclusive and transparent global structure to administer such support offers the much needed predictability of resources over an economic cycle to jumpstart access and value recognition of such tools. Thank you very much, Excellencies and ladies and gentlemen. I wish you a productive annual forum to deliver our next step of moving from political ambition to implementation. Message from the former Marshall Island Finance Minister, Alfred Alfred Jr. Thank you so very much for that. I would now like to hand over to Dr. Maria Flaxbart, uh, Parliamentary State Secretary of the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development here in Germany. Very happy to have her with us for this Insu Resilience Global Partnership Forum. Dr. Flaxbart, uh, we're very keen to hear your intervention. I can't hear Monica. So, thank you, Monica. Excellencies, Colleagues, distinguished guests, welcome to the Intra Resilience Annual Forum 2021 and a warm thank to you, to our former co chair, Alfred Alfred Jr., from the Republic of the Marshall Islands, for his inspiring words. I'm delighted that we are coming together again today and tomorrow, even if it's still on this virtual platform. This gives us the opportunity to reflect on our collaboration and achievements, as well as on the challenges and opportunities ahead with regard to scaling up action. It goes without saying that 2021 has been and continues to be another challenging year. The COVID-19 pandemic is still putting us on test. In addition to the tragic health impacts that are still being felt around the world, fiscal space has shrunk worldwide. 
Yet the need for funding to manage the impacts of climate change continues to grow. Climate change is already increasing the frequency and intensity of disasters. Their impact is compounded by further challenges such as the pandemic. The recent flooding in the Ahr Valley and the surrounding area has given Germany a dramatic impression of these risks. In countries and regions with less coping capacity, the impact of similar events has the potential to be much bigger. So the need for us to work together in tackling these challenges has never been more obvious. And the role of the Inter Resilience Global Partnership is therefore becoming even more important. Only together we can realize our vision 2025 and narrow the global protection gap. Since I addressed you at the annual forum last year, the Inter Resilience Global Partnership has grown to more than 110 members. Together, as a partnership, we support more than 200 projects in over 100 countries worldwide. Last year alone, 137 million people have been protected from disaster thanks to this work, thanks to your work. Within the high-level consultative groups, the steering body of the Inter Resilience Global Partnership, we have been working to continue this trajectory of growth and impact over the coming years. At our fourth meeting in June, we approved the reversed um, monitoring and evaluation framework to improve accountability and assessment of progress towards our vision 2025. And we also agreed to ask the Inter Resilience Secretariat, Secret Secretariat to develop a set of principles for premium and capital support. So I'm pleased, I'm very pleased to announce that these principles were formally approved by the high-level consultative group during our fifth meeting last night. I hope they will serve us as a guide, help to overcome affordability and sustainability barriers, and maximize the resilient impact of climate and disaster risk finance and insurance. Among the many achievements in advancing climate and disaster risk finance and insurance, let me just mention the following. To date, the UK, the US, Canada, Japan, France, the Netherlands, the US and Germany have pledged around 1 billion euros in total to implement the Insure Resilience Vision 2025. The V20's sustainable insurance facility will be launched at COP26 and will become operational later this year. This is a big step towards scaling up protection for small and medium enterprises in vulnerable countries. My sincere congratulations to this really great success. And just last month, I attended the launch of the Insurance and Risk, facility, Risk Finance Facility, a new flagship initiative of the United Nations Development Programme. At COP26, our evidence roadmap will be announced and the Centre of Excellence for Gender Smart Solutions will be launched. And I look forward to these exciting developments. Dear colleagues, before I close, I would like to announce that this will be my last speech at an Inter-Resilience Annual Forum in my capacity as co-chair, as I won't be joining the next German government. I would like to thank you all for your contributions, dedications and memorable cooperations. Please rest assured that Germany will remain committed to advancing protection against climate risks through the Insure Resilience Global Partnership. For these two content-packed days, 
for the annual forum, I encourage you to seize the opportunity to engage with the colleagues and partners around, exchange ideas and solutions and advance our joint agenda. I wish you an insightful and moving and motivating meeting. Thank you very much.